So my name is Ivan. I have been with VMware for the past seven years in the vSphere UI team. Uh, we are building what is also known as the vCenter UI. So based on this, I will try to give you some ideas about performance testing of the UI. Uh, in, in, in this talk, uh, I will be talking about, uh, as uh, you already heard, performance testing of web applications, and more specifically, the UI responsiveness of these web applications, because this is what the user directly perceives, and the user should be very important to us. Consider, for example, the following use case. I log in into a web app, uh, I wait for the UI to load, and then I click on a button. In a few moments, the screen changes, and I have my actionable data in front of me. Uh, that's fine. That's, uh, all, we, uh, that's uh, all we what expected. However, a few moments for me may very well have been an eternity for you. So clearly, the UI responsiveness is something subjective, and as such, we need to put some specific numbers behind it. Was it really one second or five seconds or maybe even 2,200 milliseconds? So one, our number one goal should be in this case to be able to really tell how long did it take. So if we have these, two pro if the, if, if we have these three problems uh, nested in each other with uh, r maybe rising priority, let's say, then, of course, uh, to solve them, one number, our number one goal would be to really tell how long did it take. And then uh, we should also strive to automate things so, so that there is no user intervention required and so that we can run our measurements on a regular basis again without user intervention. Building on our mental model that I have just um, introduced, here's a UI control with a search button. We click on a button and then the UI starts transitioning through some states. We may also have some intermediate data, but the user only will be able to tell on step three that, yes, I have my actionable data right now, and this is the time when the UI has actually settled or stabilized. These are the words that I'm going to use in my vocabulary uh, for the next slides. What we want to achieve is to be able to measure this thing automatically. So basically, the, uh, this time span between the user interaction, in this case, this is a click on a button, and then uh, once uh, the load, the UI has already settled. When the user can tell us, yes, I have my actionable data right now. And we, as a team uh, of developers, realized that this time span here is actually built of two separate components. One are the network calls that a typical web application does. These are asynchronous HTTP requests, or also known as AJAX requests. There may be zero or more of them for each a workflow like this one. And uh, the second component, however, is the time that it takes for the web application to really crunch through the results after the responses of this request has come. It usually uh, makes some modifications to the DOM, to the document tree, such as adding or deleting elements, and this sometimes happens multiple times. And eventually, the browser has to re-render our changes. So for non-trivial and non-Hello World applications, the second component is always there with some considerable weight. Uh, of course, one could argue that uh, we may also track the AJAX requests only, and I can agree, but this works only for uh, isolated number of uh, maybe smaller apps. But for enterprise applications with uh, many contributors and uh, long history, so to say, the second component is um, always there. So if I am now uh, to, to tackle both of these components separately, so if I am to analyze the AJAX requests, I will certainly go by collecting HAR files. This I can done with Google Chrome, for example, in the network tab. A HAR file gives me details about the past requests that the browser did, including URL, method, and most importantly, the duration of each and every request. So far, so good. What about the second component? So again, Google Chrome, this time the performance tab, where I can start a session. And uh, at the end of this uh, 
session, uh, Chrome will report some very exhaustive information about how did the UI behave. So was there any very running JavaScript tasks, which in turn takes too much time from the JavaScript event loop, and which in turn decreases uh, the um, what, what the user uh, worsens the experience of the user because the frame rate drops. And uh, even though the browser is multi-threaded to some extent because of this loop, the user will experience some degrading performance. So uh, based on this, we decided uh, let, uh, let us maybe try to automate this with the JavaScript library. Uh, we built it, it is uh, still uh, for in-house use, uh, but in the next few slides, I will try to uh, present you the main ideas behind the library and, and uh, how it works. So here it is. With it, we wanted to be able to express the following thought. Interact with the UI, and then for a given period, period of time, capture all the AJAX requests that the web application we are testing does, and uh, wait for some provided target element to settle or to stabilize. While waiting for this element to settle, that actually means, implementation-wise for us, that we observe this element for changes, and we deem it settled once changes basically stop. Uh, on each change, uh, I will show you uh, some pseudocode in a few slides. We just um, rerun a predicate function that the, uh, that, that the user supplied. And in code, this looks like this. So we create a new measurement, or also performance measurement session. We give it a name and some ID. Then we instruct the framework itself to interact with this element by giving in a selector for the element and a callback function. For now, for actually 100% of the times, we, we simply click on this element. But as you can see, it's, it's uh, more flexible than this. Then we instruct the framework to start waiting for some other element. For example, the population grid from, from, the, uh, uh, from our example at the beginning to settle. And each time the element changes, this callback function here is run over this uh, target element. And we do this for the next, in this case, 15 seconds. So we give our framework a static interval static timeout so that the performance measurement session that we are creating with it will run for at least these 15 seconds. The reasoning is the following. Observe all the AJAX requests during this time and uh, keep observing our element for changes. Rerun the predicate on each change. This is uh, how the first part of the problem is done. We use two web APIs. One has been with us for maybe tens of years. It is the XHR, XHR API, the XML HTTP request, which used for making AJAX requests from the browser. And uh, we patch its prototype, these two methods here. The aim is for us to be able to collect details about the request, such as method, URL, etc. And as you can see, we, we also bind to the onload end uh, property of the instances. So each instance is a request. So this means that we know the start and end time of the requests. And we can, of course, use this to track their uh, duration. And indeed, we did so at the beginning. But we realized there is a better way to do this, namely the Performance Observer API, a fairly newer one, but very handy for our goals. We use this to measure the performance, the duration of each and every request. And during our multiple tries, we made sure that the times reported by the performance observer are actually exactly the same as the ones reported by the network tab in Google Chrome. So we are fairly certain in the correctness of this part of the solution. At the end, we joined the details from both methods. So that simply means that we uh, merge the durations of the requests with their URLs, methods, uh, etc. All the details of a single request. Actually, of all the requests that have happened uh, during our performance measurement session. And uh, what about uh, the tracking of, the, of our target element? Here it is. So, uh, 
as you may have guessed, there is another very handy web API here. It's called Mutation Observer. It's not on the slide, but I have it in the references slide. This is the algorithm um, which, we, which we use. First, we get our current timestamp and call it interaction timestamp. Then, uh, immediately afterwards, we do the interaction with the element. And then the timer, the, this static thing that I have shown you 15 seconds from our example, uh, we start it. And um, during our performance measurement session, while this timeout is not yet expired, we basically do two things. First, we wait for our target element to appear in the DOM. If it is not there yet, this is this part here. And once it appears in the DOM, uh, we update our settlement timestamp. As a matter of fact, we do the same thing as here, so we evaluate the predicate, and if it returns true, we update our settlement timestamp. But for brevity, it's a bit different here. Then, when our element is in the DOM, or if it has been in the DOM in the first place, we start observing this element and all its child elements. So, this is basically a part of the whole DOM, of the whole document tree. And as such, we are observing this subtree, which is identified by our target element. On every change in this subtree, we evaluate our, our predicate over, this, uh, over our element. And uh, if, we if it returns true, we update our settlement timestamp. Our predicate was from, the, from our example, this is element visible. So, so far so good. The crux of this O is maybe here. So we do, we, we use set timeout with zero so that on each update from this uh, mutation observer, we are actually running our uh, predicate in the next browser task. So think of the JavaScript event loop. And why we do it, why do we do it this way? Because when we receive the event, it's not the same moment when the user will see the changes caused by this event. So imagine that the grid has changed somehow. For, for example, maybe uh, 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 some, the content has come uh, and we are notified about it by our event. The thing is that this change will only be rendered at the end of the current task. And because of this, uh, we defer the, evalu the evaluation of the predicate to some subsequent task from the JavaScript event loop. At the end of the day, uh, after the timeout is already expired, our duration that we targeted and that we wanted to measure originally is simply the uh, difference between the latest settlement timestamp that we recorded and our constant initial interaction timestamp. So this is how the result of it looks like. This is the so-called performance measurement report. We have our duration here, the thing that we have measured about the responsiveness of the UI, and a list of all the AJAX requests that uh, have been recorded with their details, most important than everything maybe, the duration. Note, however, that we also have start along with the duration, which allows us to what our requests and to reason about whether they are parallel or not, because one way of one way of optimizing things is, of course, to parallelize requests that are subsequent, but there is no need for them to be. Then, uh, last two slides: how we actually use it in house. We use it with another framework. This time, it is built with uh, on uh, Selenium, and this is our end-to-end -end functional testing framework. We use it for our regressional testing, but we also use it for this kind of performance tests. This framework loads our JavaScript performance framework into the browser along with the vSphere UI. It calls it, and uh, eventually it, it waits for it to, 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 to uh, do its job, and eventually uh, it extracts this report that I have just shown, parses it, and creates open tracing spans out of it. Think of open tracing uh, as a stack trace of a process, for instance, where every function or method call has its own duration. This is how it looks like. These are open tracing spans, and the one wrapped in red here is the span created by our performance measurement session. 
Not sure if you can see it, but this session says load storage overview grid. And it has lasted for around 500 milliseconds. So it took that long for the vSphere UI to respond to some user interaction and um, stabilize this uh, storage overview grid. Also, something interesting that we can see here, there are two parallel AJAX requests during this session. And quite unfortunate for us as UI developers, they are uh, very fast. This means that this implicit span here in green that they have added to the image is what we can really optimize and work for if we deem these 500 milliseconds not acceptable. With it, finally, to the references slide, because I forgot the thank you slide, but I do thank you all, and I really hope that there will be some of you that bring some of our ideas home to their applications. Thanks. Yep, there is a question. Uh, hi. hi. Um, so, uh, how do you, uh, do you get like uh, requirements, or how do you know if uh, a request AJAX request is fast or slow? Do you make this decision on your own, or you have like uh, requirements? Uh, what duration is okay? Yes, we have targets for the durations here. Uh, they're different, but say usually around a second, uh, not counting latency, of course, this is without latency. So yes, we do have targets, and indeed, uh, what we gather from our performance measurement session is um, compared to our targets, and this is how we fail performance tests. Uh, regarding the requests, no, we don't, but with this kind of visualization, uh, we have the advantage to be able to tell exactly Oh yes, this time it is the request which is slow, so let's, uh, let's log back to the back end, for example. Thank you. Another one here. Hello, uh, quick question. How do you deal with uh, flaky end-to-end -end tests and do they uh, affect your uh, performance measurements? Fake? Fl tests? Flaky, like flaky tests. breaking the end-to-end -end tests? Uh, yes, we, we tackled this a lot, and, but since we are using this Selenium framework that I mentioned from quite some time, uh, we try to reduce the flakiness as much as possible. And the steps, so the parts that load and call the JavaScript performance measurement session, uh, also leverage this, this deflakiness effort that we have been doing. Sometimes, uh, yes, we, we get some uh, false negatives, for example. Sometimes the browser gets too slow and we get some outliers even in the performance measurement. But if they do not repeat because we have automated the tests, they run on a regular basis. If it's just a single outlier, we may not even analyze it. We, we look for a trend. Yeah. Sorry, do you run the tests with, with every commit or...? Functional uh, tests with every few commits, but uh, performance tests uh, not that often. Say a couple of times a week, maybe, something like that. That's the cadence. Thank you.